Hello, everybody, and welcome to our e-learning course on seismic isolation. My name is Hannah Cartwright, um, and Massimo Petrarca, as usual, will be presenting the e-course, which will begin just shortly. But before we begin today, uh, they wanted me to come in and announce that in September, we will begin hosting monthly roundtables. For the, the roundtables, what they will be is, besides Massimo and other members of our staff, there will be researchers and professors from all around the world that will be participating. The scope of the round tables will be to facilitate scientific discussions about nonlinear analyses in general using open seas and using open seas to develop nonlinear analyses. So during these round tables that are going to be starting in September, you'll be able to ask these experts questions about using open seas. Um, and in mid-August, we will send around a newsletter and which will contain more information about these uh, round tables that will start from September. All right, so now that I've short shared that news with you, I will turn it over to Massimo, who will begin uh, the seminar on seismic isolation. Hold on one second while I go and get him. Thank you, nice to meet you all. Enjoy your learning. So oh, hi everyone. Okay. <clears throat> so welcome to the new to this new learning course. Um, as you know, it's about uh, seismic isolation. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, here we are. Now, as usual, we are uh, recording this webinar, so you will find the uh, recording and all the contents files on our website by tomorrow. Um, and here I will give you, yes, here we are. I will explain you uh, briefly what you will have inside, inside the contents folder. So you will have two PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to show you right now. Uh, the first one is about a uh, brief introduction about the uh, varying elements that you have in OpenSeas. And then a small introduction to the case study that we are going to use for this webinar. Then you will have a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet for um, the isolator preliminary design. And then you will have the two already made um, input files for SDK and OpenSeas uh, of the building. One is for the fixed base case and one is for the isolated case. Uh, of course, as you know, in OpenSeas, you have many, many varying elements. We just picked one of them for this first webinar. And then, of course, in the future, we are going to do uh, other webinars, uh, trying to use all the others, uh, all the other um, varying elements that we have in OpenSeas. And then we have a starting model from which we start and we start applying all the isolators and all the analysis stages. So let's start with a small presentation about how to model, uh, how you can model uh, isolators in open seas. Um, so first of all, um, well, this, this is a, a, a small introduction about what we are going to see today. Um, everything that I'm going to present is courtesy of Dr. Luca Ceto, which is a PhD here at the University uh, Gabriele D'Annunzio Pescara, and he made he provides us all these um, all these all the materials for this webinar. Uh, so OpenSeas has a lot of varying elements, so they are specialized elements for, uh, modeling, isolate, uh, for modeling isolators. Uh, as you probably know, you can model isolators in simplified ways using just equivalent springs, but in this case, they made uh, specialized elements. And you can find them under the element property, varying elements, and you have all of them here. Of course, they can be classified in elastomeric bearings, and you have the first one here then the friction pendulum ones and then in other you have some other uh, more specialized kind of uh, isolator systems uh, here you have in this presentation of course i will give it to you you will have a brief a brief uh, recap of all the um, all the main features of, of all the uh, isolators here about the uh, elastomeric bearing elements then there are all of them uh, in this case, we are going to test only one of it. So here you have a summary of 
all the possibilities that you have in open seas for the elastomerics and then for the friction pendulum. And finally, for the, those specialized other bearing elements. Okay, uh, just some of them, particularly the, the, the friction pendulum ones, will need not only the element property, but also the friction model. And as you know, the friction model in STKO can be found under the definition. Okay, so you can go on the definition, typically where you define the time series, you can find also the friction model, you can pick one of them. Now, this one we, uh, is not going to be the topic of today's webinars. In, in, the, uh, in the case study, we're going to use the elastomeric bearings, so we don't need the friction model. And here there is a, a brief uh, description of all the friction models. So now let's go to the case study. Once again, this one is courtesy of Dr. Luca Ceto. Uh, in his PhD, he's actually working on this structure. It is located in Italy, Milan. Um, and he took only, only one, one piece of this structure. Uh, he made uh, all his research about this, so starting from simple model analysis. Then, of course, he did all this stuff to, uh, to perform a selection of the accelerograms and so on. Um, this is a small a summary of uh, how the structure is going, is going to be. Uh, it, it will be very easy uh, because we, we, need, we need to focus on the isolator system. So uh, the entire building is pretty regular. Uh, we have just elastic beam columns and beams, uh, fixed at the base, rigid diaphragm as usual, uh, master nodes in the center of mass, um, diaphragms, rigid diaphragms, and nodal forces and masses. So the building will be very easy and we will start with an already built building, okay? So we're just going to apply the isolators and define all the analysis steps that you need. Now in his thesis, of course, he performs several analysis, in this case, seven models for several accelerograms. Of course, for the sake of simplicity of this webinar, we're going to do just one analysis with just two accelerograms, one in X and one in Y. Uh, then he not, he, Dr. Aceto not only focused on um, isolating uh, the building itself, but he was, the topic of his thesis is actually to, um, to, to design a new isolator system for server racks, which are these ones. And so his idea was to isolate the server racks directly rather than isolating the entire system. Uh, so here there is a small uh, description of how it is going. Here, this should be a, a small video of how the isolation of the racks works. And so on. So you can you can you can have a look at this presentation, and of course you will have an extra file. Uh, let, let me stop it. Okay, an extra file that will be very useful to test all the uh, of many of the open seas bearing elements. Uh, it is a simple file. You will you will have it. You can just change the parameters, and basically in this file you have very simple models. So just uh, four isolators for each simple model, where you can just test the material parameters so that you can see how each one of them work. So it can be very useful as a virtual laboratory to test uh, the performance of each uh, of every uh, open seas formulation. And of course, you will have also, also this file. So now we can close the presentation and we can directly go to STKO. Uh, there is a question, hello, where can we find these files? All these files will be found by tomorrow on our website, I will show you. Um, tomorrow you, will, you can just go on our website and go in as their soft, as usual for every webinar. So this one is true for every, web, for every webinar. Just the day after the webinar, you go under training, support and training, training. Then you go in e-learning courses. And here you have the upcoming webinar and all the previous webinars. For each one of them, you have a link on our YouTube channel to watch the recording and a button here to download the contents files, okay? Now for, so tomorrow you will find all these things, okay? Plus an extra file which is for the comparison of the different isolators. So as usual, after a webinar, just go on our website, support and training and you will find everything there. Okay, so here I made the presentation so we can start directly with STKO. Now, just not to waste time modeling the building itself, I already prepared a model, okay, but without the analysis steps. So we are going to, to do all the analysis steps now, but the model will be already built, okay? And then we will do an analysis of both the fixed base case and the isolated case, okay? So you can just open STKO, 
and you can open the model file that you will find tomorrow. So this is the starting point. So open it. Okay, just let me reduce the read. Um, once again, as you know, uh, OpenSeas is unitless and so it is STKO. So it is very important at the beginning of, of a modeling explaining what is the unit system that I use. So I use the international unit system, so Newton and meters, okay? So just be consistent everywhere. So I'm going to, to show you how the model has been built. As you can see, there is everything. Everything is defined, but there is no nice steps. These are nice steps are what we are going to do. So um, first thing, uh, the model is made of two main geometries. Okay, the first one is the structure plus the master nodes located at the center of mass, of course, here, plus the base lab. Here we decided to model the base lab as a slab rather than um, as an extra um, rigid diaphragm. So this one is an entire structure. Everything is joined using the, of course, the uh, merge command. Okay. And then you have another geometry here, which are the base nodes. So let me select them. And they are all these nodes at the base, okay? Uh, because of course they need to be separated. So you have the superstructure here and the base nodes. And then there will be interaction. So the first interaction, okay, here it is. So structure, base nodes. Then we have an interaction for the rigid diaphragm. And as usual, as you know, we made it in many, many webinars. So you just can create a new interaction. You select all the center nodes here as masters and all the nodes at the different uh, floors as, as lakes. Now in many webinars you have seen that uh, the master node was actually detached from the structure. Uh, in those cases it was because there was no physical node at the center of mass but in this case there is a beam passing through the center of the building so the, the center of mass is it's just one of the nodes of the building itself, okay? That's why you don't see an extra geometry for the center of mass. And then the next interaction is for the isolators. So it is an interaction where the master nodes are the, all the nodes of the second geometry, these ones, and the slave nodes are the nodes at the bottom of every column, okay? So master and slaves, and these are the interactions. Now, when, once uh, the geometry has been done, I also created a local axis for the isolating system here. Because the isolating system can have either a physical length, as I did here, or a zero length. Now, the problem is that OpenSys doesn't know how to, under, how to define the local system if it has a zero length. So in this case, it was not necessary, but just to be precise, I prefer to, to explicitly define the local system for the isolator. Keep in mind that the isolator wants the x-axis to be the normal axis, so this one. And basically, I just created the isolator and, that, and I assigned them to all the interaction for the base. In fact, as you can see, if you switch on the visualization of the local axis, you can see the local axis for the isolator. So remember, the x-axis should be in the isolator axis. So once the geometry has been done and also the local axis, I created some selection sets. Selection sets are, use, are useful for uh, an easy selection. And also because we will need them later on to create an interactive monitor that during the analysis will monitor the response at certain points of the structure. So I created an, an, um, a selection set for all the columns, another one for all the beams, okay? Then one for the slab. So basically the first three selection sets define the entire building, entire structure. Then I have a selection set for the base nodes. I will use them to monitor their total reaction at the base. And then I have a selection set for the top node <clears throat> and I will use it to monitor the displacement at the top node, okay? So once we are done with this, local axis, selection set, geometry and interaction, our geometric model is done. Then of course we start defining uh, definitions. For definitions, we need basically in this example just the time series. So first we define a linear time series as usual because we need to perform a gravity analysis before the dynamic one. So as usual, we, we pick a linear time series that goes from zero to one. Then we define two, uh, the two accelerograms. So we need two path time series where we can import directly the accelerogram in terms of uh, values, accelerations and times. Now, both of them have a time discretization of 0.01 seconds, okay? 
So one in X and the other in Y. Then we go to the physical properties. Now in this case, it is very simple because we don't want to focus on the building itself. So we decided to give the same column section everywhere, uh, just elastic, of course. So elastic properties for the concrete and the cross section here and the same for the beams, okay? Perfect, and then of course, since we have this base slab here, we also need an elastic uh, membrane plate section for the shell elements there. So also this one is in concrete, perfect. Then, uh, as you can see now, we don't have any element property, any, sorry, any physical property for the isolator system. Why? Because we are going to use an isolate, uh, a pairing elements that bearing element that doesn't need any physical property because all the physical properties for this bearing element is already embedded in the definition of the element itself, okay? So no physical property for the isolator. Then we move to the element properties, and of course we have an elastic beam column for both beams and columns, just linear kinematics. We are going to, we are not going to study key delta effects here, of course, it's an isolated system. Then we need a shell element for, um, for the base, just simply a shell MITC4 is sufficient. And then, of course, here it is the core of our analysis, which is the isolator element. So, as I told you in the presentation, for the isolator, so you go under model, uh, bearing elements, and you can find them all here. And I just used the first one, the elastomeric text. Now, why did I choose this one? Well, first of all, because it is probably the easiest one to use. And the nice thing is that, well, of course, you have to choose between um, uh, el elastomerics or uh, friction pendulums based on your needs. Now, in this case, I decided to choose this one because it's the easiest one to start with. So for a first webinar on isolation system, it is probably uh, the best choice. Um, it is easy to define because you don't need to define uniaxial uh, properties in the different directions. So you need to do any material calibration all the parameters that you have are strictly related to the material parameters of rubber and lead core or to the geometry. So as you can see, you have the uh, total yield strength of the, of the bearing element. Here, this one is a post yield stiffness ratio. So it's the ratio of the uh, stiffness after yielding to, this, to the initial stiffness. Then you have the shear modulus of the elastic bearing. Then you have the bulk modulus of the rubber. Then you have two diameters. Uh, an internal diameter is to consider the hole for the lead core and the external diameter, of course. Then you have parameters for defining the uh, thickness and number of layers. Then you have some optional parameter because if you go on the website, you can see that you can define also um, some optional parameters to define, for example, buckling. There are many other things. Now we are not going to, into much of the, all these details, so we just define the basic parameters. But of course, in this element, you can also you can also define uh, button, button stuff there. And of course, since I define my own uh, orientation with the local axis, I need to switch on the orient. Okay, switching on this one actually in OpenSeas allows you to define. Where is it? Is it here? Let me open it once again. When you switch on the uh, ori orientation in OpenSeas, you can directly input the x-axis and the y-axis. Now, in this case, in STQ, you, you don't have to. You just need to say, okay, I want to use my own local axis. And STQ will write the local axis given by this local axis here, okay? So this is perfect. Once you have done this, you, can, you basically have your um, bearing element, okay? Then I will show you how to do some extra calculation on this element because all these material parameters, as you can see, are parameters uh, related to the geometry and to the constitutive models inside, so rubber and lead. But as you can see, you can specify directly the stiffness of uh, the entire bearing element, as you can see. Um, this one actually, it is calculated directly inside OpenSeas. Uh, you will see during the webinar that we will need uh, for computing, for example, the, uh, the periods of the isolated structure, we will need to access the real stiffness of uh, this isolator. Now, to understand how it is done, you need to access the OpenSys code. Of course, uh, for example, in the OpenSys code, when you define the elastomeric X, they do some calculation based on the user parameters, and they compute the initial stiffness parameters. 
Now, of course, I know that many of you do not know how to access the open source code, so we prepared an Excel spreadsheet, which is this one, the isolator pre preliminary design, where in the second, uh, in the second uh, spreadsheet here, you have all the calculation that has been done inside OpenSys, at least for the calculation of the uh, initial stiffness. So you just need to input the same parameters that you input in STKO, okay? So all these parameters here, but not all of them, just the ones needed for computing the stiffness. And you need to give an estimation of the vertical load, the total vertical load um, going on into uh, onto just one isolator. And all these values will be calculated, and so finally you will have all the uh, stiffness. So the vertical stiffness, the horizontal stiffness components, one is given by the rubber, which is actually postial stiffness, and one is the um, initial stiffness of the lead, and so the total initial stiffness is the sum of them. And this one reflects the calculation that's been done here. So just one side note, uh, because it is not written in the documentation, but when you define, of course, the elastomeric element, there is an alpha parameter. Here, they did not specify any range for this value. Of course, this value can range from zero to one, but you cannot assign zero. Assigning zero actually will lead to error inside OpenSys, because as you can see here, they do a division by alpha. So keep in mind, alpha should be in the range zero to one. Um, Please show the orient, how to import the orient. Okay, let me show you. There's a question about the orientation. Uh, it's pretty easy to assign an orientation. So what you need to do actually, uh, let me create a new, uh, a new document. So we'll show you on a new document how to define an orientation for a geometry. So defining orientation is pretty easy. Let's say you are, okay, let me draw a simple geometry that can be our isolator. Let's say this one. Okay, now by default, actually this one, probably it's easier if I do an interaction. Yeah, it's easier because isolators will be modeled with interaction. So let me create two points, the base point and the point of the structure, and then you can define an interaction, node to node, master node, right click, Slave node, right click, and here you have the interaction, okay? Now imagine this one is one of the isolators that you have here, okay? Uh, just one of them. So by default, if you switch on the local axis, um, since the interaction does not have a physical geometry, because in this case it has a physical length, but it gives you the opportunity to give just zero length, uh, STGO doesn't know how to assign a local axis, so it just defines the default local axis. Now I told you that in open seas, the bearing elements need to have the uh, x-axis oriented along the vertical direction. So you can just go to local axis, right click, add, define a new rectangular local axis, okay. Then I need to orient the x in the vertical direction. So I can just move in a front view like this one, and then I click on the first point, second point, so the x-axis as you can see is pointing there, and then, then I need to rotate it, and this one can be fine. Once you define three points, your local axis is there, it's fine. So you can just click the geometry and you can drag and drop the interaction. Now, as I release it, you will see that the uh, local axis here will change to match this one, okay? So this is the way you define a local axis, and you just drag and drop it onto the selection and the selection will now have this orientation, okay? So let me close this one. Okay, uh, so this was about assigning orientation. Then of course, specific to the elastomeric X, if you want to use the orientation that we assign, just go to edit, click on optional and click on orient. This means use my own orientation. Okay, so once I define the element property, everything has been defined in terms of geometry, constitutive behavior and finite element formulation. So we can go ahead with the definition of the boundary conditions, okay? So let's go to the condition tab. Now, of course, the first boundary condition is to fix our model. Now, the obvious fixity should be a fix on the base of the isolator. So if I click on this one and click edit, you will see that I'm fixing all six degrees of freedom to each one of the base node of the isolator, okay? So this is pretty standard, cancel. 
But as you, as you can see now here, I also have a fix at the base of the structure. Now let me explain you why. So you can see this one is a new fixity at the base of the structure, and I define them as two separated constraints. Why? Um, because in this example, I will show you how to do an eigenvalue analysis first for the um, fixed base case, and then for the isolated case. So at the beginning, I will use both fixities. So my structure will be actually a fixed base structure. And then I will do the first eigenvalue analysis. Then I will use a, a special command that we have in STKO to remove one of the conditions. And in particular, we will remove the fixity at the base of the structure. So I basically will activate the isolators. And then I will do a second eigenvalue analysis. And this time it will take into account the isolator system. And finally, we will be doing a chemistry analysis for the entire isolated system, okay? So that's why in this case, I defined a fixity both at the base of the isolator and at the base of the structure. Then of course, we need another boundary condition for the rigid diaphragm. If I click on edit, you will see that I selected all the interactions for the rigid diaphragms. And of course, I need to choose the perpendicular direction, which is three in this case, because the third direction is the normal to the plane that I want to constrain. So the plane is in XY, the third direction is three. So the direction along the global Z. Perfect. So uh, given this boundary condition, we need to assign masses and forces. Um, so I, as I told you, this structure is pretty regular. So if I go on the front, on the top view, you will see that space, the, the span between every column is the same. So we just needed to do uh, an easy lumping manually. Uh, so this mass and this force, they are connected, of course, and they, they have been assigned to the central nodes that have a full tributary area. Then we have the same, for forces, of course, then we have the same masses and forces for the side nodes that have only twice uh, half of this tributary area. And then we have the same for the corner nodes. They just have one fourth of the, of the total tributary area. So only the corner nodes, okay? And of course, this one has been assigned for the entire height of the structure. Let me show you, okay? So pretty easy in this case, it was very regular. So it was very easy to define lamp loads on the entire structure. So when we are done with masses and forces, our model is basically done. So we can start now doing the real analysis, so defining the analysis steps. So the first analysis step is to, it's not mandatory, but I typically prefer to put a recorder from the very beginning, okay? So the first step that I do is a recorder. Then we go under model, um, recorders, and PCO recorder. And then you choose a name. Uh, let's call it isolated uh, or better results. ISO. Uh, in this case, we just need displacement, um, acceleration, because we, we may want to, to see also the set acceleration, the reaction forces. And then since I told you that I, we are going to do um, eigenvalue analysis, I also want to visualize the modes of vibration. So I switch on mode of, modes of vibration, just the translational part is what I need. And I don't need anything else. We're not going to, to study into detail what's going on inside the structure because by the way, it will be, it will be isolated. Okay, so you can press okay. Now, of course, the second step, mandatory step before doing any analysis is, is to apply uh, boundary conditions. As I said, I first want to do an eigenvalue analysis of the um, fixed base case. So, uh, we can call this step add boundary conditions. So we go under model, patterns, add pattern, and we want to add a constraint pattern. So in this case, we want to apply both the uh, main fixity, which will be the fixity at the base of the isolators, but also since I want to analyze the fixed base case, I also include the fixity at the base of the structure. So basically this one means, I, I don't want to include the isolators into my analysis, okay? So these two are the only uh, single point constraints that I want. And then I also want to include the rigid diaphragm, which in this case is, is instead a multi-point constraint. So it goes under MP diaphragm. Okay. So here I have uh, my bunch of conditions. Then we can start with the eigen analysis. Um, as you know, you can do directly an eigenvalue analysis. Uh, let me call this one 
eigen x okay. when you want to do an eigenvalue analysis you can typically go into analysis and just choose eigen uh, the problem is that in this way you are simply doing an eigenvalue analysis but in this case we need some more information okay so we're not going to use directly the eigen command but we are going to use a custom command okay custom command is basically gives you the opportunity to, to copy paste a equal file now what i want to do here is to do a smart eigen analysis in which you can get more information about uh, the eigenvalues and also the the model participation masses how can we do that well first of all in this case you will find it directly inside the the content folders that we will update tomorrow it is a, just a tickle script that we are going to copy paste. Um, by the way, you can find the description for this one on our forum. It is there, let me find it here. So if you go on our forum, and you can reach the forum simply by going to uh, products, uh, sorry, support and training, support, and then you click on forum. When you click on forum, you will be here. It is divided by categories. You go under OpenSys problems. OpenSea sequential, and here it is the uh, third topic, model analysis plus mass participation, participation factors. Here there is a small description, and here is the code. So you can just click on here, select all, and you just copy, okay? But in your case, you already have it here. So I can open it with a text editor. You just copy everything. So select all, copy, and close it now. Then you go here and you paste it. Okay. So what you have here, uh, you have a procedure, typical TL procedure that will be called later on. So this procedure actually wants two mandatory inputs. One is the number of modes that you require. The second is a file name, the name of the file that will be saved and that will contain all the information about the, the periods, the all the again values, and all the uh, all a mass summary basis. So the total mass of the structure and the model participation masses and the cumulative model participation masses. Okay, they will be both printed on the uh, console and saved on this file. So of course, when you define a procedure in TCL in Tigle, defining defining it is not enough. You need to define it and then you need to call it. So I call model, which is the name. Then I pass the two mandatory parameters. So I want twenty four modes. And I want to save everything into a file called mass report fixed, because then we will do the same for the uh, isolated case. And just I use a TC, uh, text, um, a text suffix here. Uh, then another point, um, when you do an eigen, eigenvalue analysis, so probably as you know, when you do a general analysis in OpenSeas, OpenSeas automatically calls uh, a method that allows every recorder to record the results. Okay. This is true for any kind of analysis, but not for the eigenvalue analysis. An eigenvalue analysis does not automatically call the recorder. Okay? So we need to force it because we, need, we want to save these results before doing other analysis. So I just call record. This one is a, an OpenSys command to, to force OpenSys to save the results at this point. Okay? Then there is another OpenSys command called domain change. Uh, this one is actually not necessary, but I need it to uh, keep all the eigenvalues separated. So you will see a first model stage with the first eigenvalues for the fixed case. Then since I call domain change, it will create another model stage in the post-processor of STKO where you will see all the other eigenvalue analysis, okay? Then there is another important comment that was not scripted everywhere, which is the wipe analysis. The wipe analysis is used to clean all the data from a previous analysis before doing a new analysis. This one is not mandatory, but doing it this example, I noticed that if you call the eigenvalue analysis twice, the second time it will crash. So you need to call this one if you want to run multiple eigenvalue analysis, otherwise the second and the third one and so on, they will crash, okay? So keep in mind these few rules. Model analysis, record, domain change, wipe analysis. So we can press okay and okay. So here we are, we can just run this analysis now, and at this point we will just have the eigenvalue analysis for the fixed case. So let's just, let's just try to run it. Of course, let me save it as a name. 
uh, with a different name, and we can call and create a folder called example isolated. So we can save it. Let's make sure that the uh, oh, the result is already a result isolated, so it will not overlap with the others. So we can just run the analysis. Okay, the model has been done. Now it is calling running analysis. It is doing the eigenvalue analysis. It created the report here. And of course, it, it also saved it to a file. So we don't need to visualize it here. You can just go into the example isolator. And you have this file here, must report fixed. And here you will see that the problem was 3D. It gives you all the eigenvalues and all the derived values, so frequency and period for the structure, a summary of the total mass of the structure, then the modal participation masses in terms of percentage, okay, and then the cumulative one. So you can see what are the main modes here. And then of course we also want to visualize the, oh, I keep, I keep it open because I will need it later on. Now we can just go to the post processor and see the mode shapes to see how this structure works. So we go into the example ISO, result ISO. So you can open it. By default, it will create a new uh, plot group and a surface color map. Now in this case, we, also, we only have an eigenvalue analysis. So I need to visualize the modes of vibration, both as result and as deformation, if you want to see the mode of vibration, okay? Then of course, we need to scale it about 1,000, 10,000 times, otherwise you don't see anything, okay? Then of course, you have only one step. And in this step, you have many modes. Okay. Typically, when you do a, a, a nonlinear analysis, so a standard result like displacement, you will not see uh, the last line here, the mode. But when you pick modes of vibration, you will find this one because, of course, you have many modes to visualize. So the first one is the one in Y, and in fact, you will see all the uh, participation mass in Y for the first one. Then you switch to the second one, which is torsional, and in fact, you don't see any Actually, we need to improve it to include also the torsional one, but here you don't see anything more in the X or Y. And then the third one will be in X. And in fact, I go here and I see the model in X, okay? So this is one of the results for the fixed base. They are fine, so we can go back to our model. Now we need to do the eigenvalue analysis for the isolated case. So that's why I created two separated uh, fixity conditions, because now we can, re as, as we add it, a boundary condition, we can also remove it, okay? So I go in an step and I call this one remove boundary condition based structure. So what I want to do here is to go into the pattern. Instead of add pattern, I will remove pattern. So remove pattern. And what I want to remove is a, is a fixity. <clears throat> and the fixity, of course, is a single point constraint. So remove SP constraints. And here you can specify a vector of all the single points constraints that you want to remove. I just want to remove one of them, which is the fixed base structure. Now, removing this will basically mean I want to remove the fixity at this level. So I will only be left with the fixities at the bottom level. And this one means, okay, let's activate the, the isolator system. So once we are here, we can just duplicate the eigenvalue analysis in such a way that we can do the eigenvalue analysis of the isolated structure. So I can just click on eigen and click clone because actually the script will be similar. I just need to change one line. <clears throat> Let me change the name to ISO. Then I open the TCO script. I don't need to change anything to the procedure. The procedure will remain the same. I just need to change the name of the file, otherwise it will override the um, previous file. So I can call I'm going to do other analysis. So I will be doing the gravity analysis and then the Chinese analysis. So press OK, OK, and we can save it and run the analysis again. So now it is running the first model analysis. Now it is running the second one. And now that's fine. So when you go to Notepad, it will say, OK, this one has been changed. Okay, reload it, but actually there was no change here. And you go here and you will find the report for the isolated case. 
okay? And in fact, here you will see that starting from a period of 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you end up with a period of 1.4. And you will also see that now the torsional mode is the third one, not the second one, because now there is the, the first mode in Y, the second mode is in X, and then the, the torsional one. We can just make sure, go into the post-processor and reload it. Oh, by the way, as you can see now in the first analysis, I had only one model stage for the first eigenvalue analysis. Now, when I reload it, and thanks to the fact that I use the domain change, when I go here, you will see two model stages because I explicitly told OpenSys that something has changed between the first and the second eigenvalue analysis. Okay, so the first one, you will still be able to visualize the modes of vibration of the first, uh, of the first case. But when you move to the model stage two, you will see the isolated case, okay? So the first mode is in Y, the second mode is in X, okay? If you switch on the nodes, probably it's easier to visualize this one. Then the torsional one, and then all the secondary modes, okay? That's fine. So back to the preprocessor. Now we can start preparing everything for the gravity and then the dynamic analysis. So why did we do um, this eigenvalue analysis? So first of all, to have an idea of how we design these um, basic systems. So, uh, but you have to keep in mind something. Um, when we look at the results here of the isolated system, we are not going to take exactly this period. Why? Because when you use commercial software, probably such as Midas or SAP, they will uh, automatically switch between the uh, initial tangent stiffness to an effective st stiffness. They do this calculation manually. OpenSys instead is more natural. OpenSys say, okay, I will analyze what you give me. Um, so in this case, actually, it is using the initial stiffness of the isolator system because keep in mind that OpenSys um, uses the current stiffness in the eigenvalue analysis. So in our case, we made the eigenvalue analysis before any other nonlinear analysis. So it will pick up the, um, the initial stiffness, okay? But this is not what we want, actually. When you do an eigenvalue analysis of an isolator system, you need to use the effective stiffness, which is sort of a second stiffness. But OpenSys, of course, doesn't, doesn't know that you're going to do an analysis of an isolated system. So you need to do it manually. So I, ju I just used this eigenvalue analysis to explain you this point, okay? So this one is the, is the period that you have with the isolator system, but using the initial stiffness. And this is where we need uh, this spreadsheet here. As I told you, if you put all the input values for your, your isolator here, it will give you this output, which are the stiffnesses in the vertical direction, and you don't really need it, actually. What you need is the stiffness, is the initial stiffness in the horizontal direction, okay? You need this one because then if you go here, in the isolator effective parameters, here we will be doing a calculation of the effective parameters. So the effective stiffness, so the second one, and then the effective period and the effective frequency. Now here, all the values in green are inputs that you should give. So for example, this one is the vertical load given in kilonewtons. Now in our case, it was uh, approximately 200 kilonewtons times eight floors, okay? So this one is the total vertical load expected, in, uh, expected onto just one isolator. This one is the isolator yield force, once again in kilonewton, and it corresponds with the uh, one that we gave here. But of course here we're using Newton, okay? Then you have um, the initial stiffness. That's why this is an input, that's why you can take it from here. The total initial stiffness, okay? Which is in this case, this KT here and the um, post yield stiffness, which is the key E, okay? So once you have them, you need to specify a target displacement that you may want to, to obtain, okay? So this one, actually this procedure is iterative. So you can guess a displacement at the beginning, let's say, for example, when you start, you are guessing a displacement, it will not be equal to the design. Uh, oh, of course, here you have to input a design acceleration based on a response spectrum. Now, in our case, we use a response spectrum definition according to the NTC 2018, uh, so the Italian ones. Of course, you can, you can use whatever you want. And here you have to input the design acceleration. Then a computed displacement will be, will be done here. 
and we need to establish an equality between the, our gas target displacement and the computer target displacement. In fact, this objective function is the difference between them. If you click on compute, it will call the goal seek command in, uh, in Excel <clears throat> that will change the parameters to obtain, will change actually the target displacement to match the uh, um, computer target displacement, okay? So once you have them, you have the effective period and the effective frequency. Why we need them? We need them to, uh, well, to understand what will be the total period of our isolated system, but also because we are going to assign damping. And for damping, we need the frequency of both the uh, fixed base case and the isolated case, okay? That's why I decided to take it from here rather than from here, because in this case, this frequency corresponds to uh, using the initial stiffness of the isolator, but not the effective one. Okay, so we will be back to the damping in a, in a while. Now, what we need to do is to first uh, start with the gravity analysis. So before running the gravity analysis, we need to assign the vertical loads. So add vertical load. It is a pattern, so we go under pattern, add pattern, load pattern. Now this one will be a load control analysis, so we just need to choose the linear time series here. And then the loads that we have here are nodal forces, so they will go into the load vector here. So we can just edit it. We make room for uh, three components, and we choose the nodal force for the internal nodes, for the side nodes and for the corner nodes, okay? We can press okay, so we also have the uh, vertical loads. And now we can just set up the gravity analysis. So we go and add gravity. <clears throat> we can go under model, analysis, analysis command. It is static. Uh, pay attention to the constraints. Now by default, we choose the plane constraint. But as you know, the plane constraint works only if you have constraints which are, uh, that generates a diagonal constraint matrix, which is basically something like a single point constraint or a, an equal dot constraint. So one equal dot is equal to the other. But in this case, we use rigid diagrams. They have out of diagonal terms because they say, for example, the displacement of a node is equal to the displacement of the master plus the rotation of the master times a distance. So it creates a, an out of diagonal dependency. And we cannot use a plane constraint. So we need to choose one of the others. And in this case, we can safely use the transformation method because we don't have many overlapping constraints. As I told you in previous, previous webinars, when you have many, many overlapping constraints, so probably it's, it's easier to use the penalty one. But in this case, it's safe enough to use the transformation. Now, the number is fine, the system is fine. Uh, we can use Acryl of Newton just to make it faster and because we will have the nonlinearity of, um, of the basic system. So I, I often prefer to use Acryl of Newton. Keep in mind that when you use Acryl of Newton, you need more iterations. So in this case, I just want to use 100 iteration. And I don't want to update the tangent every time. So I say, okay, I give you a maximum dimension of 100 because it's the same number of iterations that I want to use here. So basically it means I want to update the tangent only at the beginning of the step and then use the creel of subspace iteration to, to find the solution. Um, okay, I typically use the normal displacement increment test for um, as a test. Then we need to do a load control, that's fine. Total duration one, because we define the, the, the ramp here, the linear time series as one. Then we can use actually a fixed time step, but just to make sure you can go in adaptive. So if you have convergence problem, it will try to adapt the time step manually. Now, of course, we want to, uh, after this analysis, we want to keep the vertical load constant. So we check the load const command, and then we also want to reset the pseudo time step to zero. Because after this analysis, of course, the pseudo time step, which in the dynamic case will be then the time, the real time, it is going from zero to one. But the path time series, um, path time series is going to um, is going from um, starting from zero. So we need to reset the time, time step to zero. Um, is that tolerance? Oh, we have a question. Is that tolerance adequate? Um, actually, it you should you, you can use less than this one 
because actually we are modeling in meters. So this one means a 10 of a millimeter. You can make it smaller. Uh, it is not necessary because when we iterate here, we reach one to the minus nine to one to the minus 12, because it is not so much nonlinear. But yes, you can use a smaller value, let's say one to the minus six, it should be fine. Um, okay, so we can go ahead. Gravity analysis. Oh, let me see if I put the load constant. Yes. Perfect. So after the gravity analysis, uh, we can start defining the uh, horizontal loads, and we, they are uh, the uniform excitation, basically. So acceleration in X, and we go under um, pattern, add pattern, and uniform excitation, direction X, and for the acceleration, we choose the time series, the second time series, which is the path time series in X. Same things for the Y direction, so we can just duplicate this one, clone it, and we are going to add it, this acceleration here, to acceleration Y, we change the direction to Y, and we choose the path along the Y direction. Fine. Uh, okay, so now we need to define the damping just before running the dynamic analysis. Let's save it. So once again, add. This time we want to apply the damping. Um, now, of course, here I have to, um, to give you a note. Um, you know very well that you have two ways for defining damping in OpenSys. Uh, one is to use the relay command that basically assign a damping to the entire model. The other case, the other choice is to go under Michelinus command and use the region command. The region command optionally allows you to define um, a custom Rayleigh, custom Rayleigh parameters for that region, that region only, okay? Um, now in this case, since we are using uh, a model which is done by a structure and an isolating system, you may say, okay, but it's better if we assign the damping only to the structure because then there is no need to assign damping to the isolators. Uh, this is not necessary because the isolators, the isolator themselves, they, they don't provide any damping, even if you assign a damping to them. Uh, you can just look at the uh, OpenSys code. If you go into the elastomerics and you choose the method get damp, you will see that they just give you a zero matrix. So they will be never damping with the with those isolator system. So this means that it's safe, it's safe enough to use just the uh, relay damping to the entire structure, okay? So let's go here, go damping. Because in any way, in any case, it will never assign damping to the isolator system. So, um, Shilano's command, relay. Now in this new version of STKO, you can assign relay damping in two ways. One is the old school one, so the, 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 the original one, which is manual, where you can assign the alpha and beta parameter manually. And for the beta parameter, you can choose if it is uh, uh, related to the current stiffness, to the initial stiffness, or to, to the committed stiffness. Um, okay, I think we have, okay. Perfect. Um, the other choice is to use automatic. I think we have a question here, but let me see. Will there be time allocated for general question? Yes, we are going to have, uh, let's say 30 minutes to 45 minutes, I think, when we finish this one. We are almost done with the, with the models. So I think that we will finish this model in 15 minutes and then we have, uh, let's say, 30 minutes for questions. I have some problems with the tablets, so I need to look at the questions here. Okay, so as I said, you can use both the manual way or the automatic way. Now, in this case, it's easier to use the automatic way because we can input directly the two uh, frequency of interest, <clears throat> the two damping parameters, the damping, damping ratios, and then we are going to obtain automatically the alpha <clears throat> and beta parameters. So in this case, we are going to use the first frequency, uh, the lowest one, so the one coming from the isolated system, but as I told you, not from here, because this one uses the initial stiffness of the isolator, but we are going to use this one, so the effective uh, period, and so the effective uh, frequency, which is 0 0.55. 
And then as a second frequency, we are going to use the one of the fixed base. One point, <clears throat> well, we can just copy paste it. One point one four four, and then we want to use a two percent. This depends on the codes that you're going to use, but in this case, we use two percent of uh, on both cases. And these are the two parameters that are going to be used for the current stiffness and for the mass matrix. Perfect, so we also have the damping here. So we can just start now with the time series analysis. But once again, as I told you, since we are moving from a gravity analysis to dynamic analysis, it's better to use the wipe analysis command. Uh, it is not necessary, but there is a warning in OpenSys that say, you're starting a dynamic analysis while you were using a static analysis. And so it says, okay, call the uh, wipe analysis. So just to stay safe, we can create a custom command or is it wipe analysis? Probably in the future version, we are going to automatically create a wipe analysis whenever you, are, you create an analysis itself, because actually OpenSys needs it. So uh, you go under the command, custom command, and you can just type wipe analysis. Yeah, Tamil case here. Finally, after the, um, the, the wipe command, we just need to define the time history analysis. So it will be pretty similar to the static one in terms of settings. So we can just clone it and then change it a little bit. So we can edit it and call time history analysis. Uh, analysis. <clears throat> of course, we need to change it from static to transient. The other settings will be fine. And we need, we want to use an implicit method, so which is the Newmark method. Well, of course, now you have many more um, dynamic integrators that are present in the version 3.2.2 of OpenSys. So Newmark method is 0 0.5, 0 0.25, to make the condition is stable one. And also here we want to use an adaptive time step because there will be now the nonlinearity of the uh, as a reader system, so you, we want to make sure that if we have convergence problem, the adaptive time step will try to uh, to make us converge. The total duration of the accelerograms are 20 seconds. So here you put the total duration in seconds, not the uh, incremental duration as it was in the previous version. So total duration and the initial number of increments. Okay. Now, uh, in my case, um, the accelerogram has a uh, time increment of 0 0.01. So uh, 2,000 initial time steps, and it can never grow. So the maximum time step will be 0 0.01. If something goes wrong in terms of convergence, the adaptive time step will try to reduce the time step, but it will never increase it because I put the maximum factor of one, okay? And of course, we don't need the load cost and the pseudo time step because this one is going to be the last analysis of our model. So we can press OK. And save it and we can run it. Uh, now actually this one will take about 12 to 15 minutes depending on the performance of our computer. So I will start it. Um, oh, there are a couple of new things that I want to show you about the new version of STKO. Um, here I set up the analysis, but then we have a new tool which is called monitor and it, it is pretty useful. So before running the analysis, I want to show you how to use the monitor because when an analysis uh, it's going to, to last well. In this case, it's pretty fast, but many times you're going to do very length, lengthy analysis. Um, so it, it can be useful to monitor the results of the analysis in real time. Um, so you can do it in a STKO like this. So you go under uh, analysis steps and you can call this one monitor. For example, we want to monitor the displacement in the X direction of the top node. And how you do this? You go into Michelin's command and you click on monitor. Uh, when you click only on monitor without specifying the monitor plot, it will just create a widget that basically gives you a summary of the uh, time step, of the percentage of the analysis, and so on. But if you also want to monitor something in terms of plot, you can, it is optional, you can switch it on. 
and you can choose what is going to be in the x-axis and what is going to be in the plot in the y-axis. Now, since here we want to plot only the displacement versus the time step, so we can use pseudo time here and in the x direction, and in the y-axis we want a result instead. And this result will be a displacement along the x component on the top node. Here, I, that's why I decided to create the selection set top nodes and base nodes, because I need to use them for monitoring. Then there is an operation. Actually, this operation is only useful when you have a selection set with, with uh, more than one node. So the, the default solution is to, the default choice is to perform a sum of all of them. The other is an average, then a maximum, and then in the future version, we're going to add other options. Now, in this case, it is not, uh, there is no difference because in this selection set here, we just have one node, which is the top node. So we can leave the sum. Okay, and we, of course we need to move it before the time history analysis because we want to monitor it. So first I'm going to create many monitors and then I will move the time history analysis uh, down. So uh, this one will monitor the X displacement on top. I want to do the same for the Y displacement so I can clone it. And I'm going to edit this step, calling it UY. I don't need to change anything, just the component because I want to monitor also the displacement in Y. And then we can do something a um, little bit more complicated. Instead of monitoring a displacement at one node versus the time step, you can actually monitor, for example, the displacement at the top node versus the total base reaction at all the base nodes. Uh, so we can just clone this one, for example, and we can call it UX versus FX. Uh, so now at the, at the X axis, we want a result because we want a displacement along the X direction of the, uh, the top node. While in the Y axis, we want still a result, yes, but a reaction force along the X direction, but now at the base nodes. And here is where the operation comes into play. Here we want to do a sum because we don't have just one node, we have many nodes. We want the total reaction, so we perform a sum. And then we can duplicate it to, to do the same for the, <coughs> for the weather action. So why, why, um, y axis and y axis. And the selection sets are the same. So top node versus bottom node. Now, of course, the monitor should be located exactly at the point where you want to start monitoring a result. So they should be located before the time history analysis. So it's, easy to, it's easier to select the time history analysis and move it down. Okay, so first we have all the monitors and then time history analysis. I think we are all set up so we can save it. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. So we can start the analysis. Now you will see a difference from the previous analysis because from the first time you assign a monitor, of course it will start monitoring in terms of plot from the point it is defined, okay? But if, if STKO finds a monitor along the, uh, the time steps, it will open the uh, statistic monitor from the very beginning. So you can see it now. Run the analysis. And okay, just in a second, it will open the STKO monitor. Now first model analysis. And of course it is not monitoring anything. Okay, now it is doing the vertical analysis. And as you can see, you have here the, um, uh, the statistics of the first analysis, okay? In terms of time step, time stage ID, time step ID, uh, time increment, total time, number of iterations, the last norm that we obtain, and the percentage of the analysis. And now it is doing the dynamic analysis, okay? Now it will take about 12 minutes. Uh, so I, I will show you now a little bit how the, uh, the plot works, and then we will stop it, and I will show you the results directly on the uh, already prepared models. So as you can see here, we define four monitors, so four plots. And of course, just one thing about the statistics, if you want to, to view previous statistics, you will see that it will automatically go down because we have an auto scroll command that will always show you the last line, which by the way, is the most interesting one because it's the current one. But if for some reason you want to see what happened before, you can just uncheck this one, then you can move it. You can see how it was working before. And then when you're done checking the results, you click on auto scroll and it will scroll down automatically, okay? 
Um, here we define four uh, monitors. As you can see, they have the same ID of the ID that they had in OpenCSO 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? So this one was the displacement in the X direction versus the time step. Here you have the same, but in the Y direction. Then you have displacement in X versus base reaction in X. And same thing in Y. Okay. Now we can simply stop it because I already have the results for this. So you can close it. You can stop open C's. Okay. Um, just before showing you the results, um, I prepared the model in this way because it is very easy then to run the same analysis with uh, the base isolated structure. So for example, if I want to turn this model into a fixed base model, I just need to get rid of uh, this, this um, time step here. So in this time step, as I told you, I remove the fixity of the base structure. So if, if I remove this one, I click on remove, my structure will become fixed. So it's very easy. So you, you can actually either remove it or edit it and remove this one. So in this case, it will be fixed. Then you go back. You can create room for another one and you say, no, now you, I want to remove it. Okay. And so it will become once again isolated. So you can use the same structure just by uh, switching, uh, just by including or not this removal, it will be isolated or not. Okay. And in fact, this is what I did in the, these two uh, prepared models. Let me go back to the prepared one. The building X is exactly the same model that I've done here. Then I took this model, I removed uh, the item here, so it became isolated, it became fixed. Then, just for uh, simplicity, I took the entire uh, geometry and I moved it, okay? In such a way that now in STKO, I can, I can visualize both results at the same time, okay? So it's in fact, if I, let me save this one. If I open, if I open the, these two files that will be the ones that you will find tomorrow. So this one is exactly equal to the one that I've done right now. So it does the remove boundary condition, as you can see here. We're asking to re explicitly remove the fixity at the base. So it means it is isolated. If I instead open, and it is located at the center, as you can see. If I open the, uh, building fixed base, you will see that it is, it is the same. I just translated it using the translate command. So then there is no problem doing this. Everything will be assigned. There is no problem. And I just, and I just got rid of this one. Okay. Now as you can see, there is no, no removal. Well, of course, in this case, you perform two eigenvalue analysis that, that are the same, but it's very convenient because you just need to switch um, this analysis step to turn from fixed to, to, to isolated. Now the nice thing of doing this with an offset is that then you can post-process the results in STKO in the same post-processing session. So you first can open the output for the isolated case, okay, which is this one. Then I can, I can get rid of, I can make it smaller, it's too large, okay. Then I can open another result because in, open, in STGO you, you are not forced to use just one database at a time. You can actually import many databases to do comparison. Um, so what I can do now is to import the, the results for the fixed base case. And then inside the plot group, this one is the result coming from the source database. If I change it, you can see that I will switch to the other. Okay? But I don't want to switch it actually. I want to see both of them at the same time. So for this one, I use the isolated source database. I can call it ISO. Then I can create another one, another surface color map, and I call it fixed. And in fact, the second one is using the fixed base, okay? Now I want to make them compatible. So I take the isolator and I say I want deformation, I want displacement, I want displacement, this is fine. And I want 500 as deformation scale. Then I do the same to the other. Now, even if they are different model stages, don't worry because when you start the animation, they will be synchronized. Okay? So once again, I go here and I plot by one. Okay? Then you go here. When you animate them, they will be synchronized at the same time step. Okay? So of course, you can either animate it, animate it like this if you want to see the differences, or you can run an animation. You can actually save also an animation, so you can do whatever you want. Okay? So 
based on the performance of your computer. So here you can, you can compare them qualitatively, looking at the plots, or you can actually extract results to see what's going on in detail. Uh, now, when I extract results, I typically prefer to reset the deformation scale to zero because I need to select nodes, so I, I don't want any, any deformation. I want to show the nodes and I want to hide the beam extrusion so it's easier to, to visualize the node. And then I do the same to the other. So zero, show nodes, and hide beam extrusions. And it's really very convenient to use then the orthogonal projection because it will be very easy to select the nodes. So let's say um, at the beginning we want to, uh, to, to see what are the displacement on top or the acceleration actually, for example, accelerations on the fixed case. So we can see how, what is the ratio of the displacement of the fixed case with respect to the isolated case. So uh, extracture data. Uh, we want the acceleration, so they are defined on nodes. This is fine. We want to extract them from the isolated case. So I need, uh, sorry, so from the first fixed case at the beginning. So I choose a source database, the fixed one. I only want the results from the uh, time history analysis. So it, it is the last model stage. So first eigenvalue, second eigenvalue, gravity analysis, time history analysis. Um, pseudo time step is fine at the x-axis, and in the y-axis, I want the acceleration in x. Uh, in the y-direction, the order of magnitude is the same. So I do this one for the x-direction, you can do the same for the y. Next, I need to select a node, and I want to select the top master node. Next, and I can call it ax -X. I also want to create a chart here the first time, okay? So this one is, is the acceleration that reaches almost 3, 2.5, let's say, as a peak of the fixed case. And I can call this one just AX because here I'm going to superimpose the acceleration in for the isolated case. So let's go back to chart data, extract once again on data. This time I want the data source as a isolated database for time step acceleration in x. Now this time I need to select this other node here. So next, ax isolated, but I don't want to create an extra chart because I'm going to, to reuse the previous chart. So finish. As you can see here, we have another chart data. I can go here and I can add ax isolated. So you can just superimpose and see the differences, okay? Now, in terms of maximum value, it was about 2.5 times the reduction between um, the fixed system and the isolated one, okay? So 2.5 in terms of um, accelerations. Then we want to, to do the same in terms of uh, base reaction to see what's going on. So for the base reaction, it's easier if I go in the frontal view. Frontal view and this one should be yeah, this one is the fixed and this one is the isolated. So let's extract base reaction for the isolate for the fixed case. So uh, results fixed stage four. So then step is fine, but we want reaction forces along the x direction. Now we want all the nodes for the reaction of the base structure. Now keep in mind that the base structure, since we didn't remove the fixity here. We need to select these nodes because here we will find the reactions, not here, okay? Because we fix both of them, of course, the reaction of the structure will be found at this level. So next, and this one is Fx fixed. Now here, yes, I want to create a chart. And here it is very important to use the add because while well before it was a displacement, it was just one single node. Now we have multiple nodes and we want to add them, okay? So finish. Uh, these are the reactions. Now keep in mind that they are in Newton. So here is the order of magnitude of um, 15,000 uh, 15, or 20, yeah, 15,000, yes. Kilonewton, sorry. 15,000 kilonewton. Then I do the same for the isolated case. Oh, I'm going to call this one just fx. So isolated case, I go here, extract on nodes, um, this time isolated source, that's fine. Fourth model stage, pseudo time step against 
reaction force in X. And now, of course, we want the fixities of the base of the isolators because now, in this case, we removed the fixities of the structure. So the only fixities that we have, so the reaction will be at the base of the isolator. Um, next, the FX ISO. Here, we don't want to create another chart because we're going to use the previous one. So we go in FX and we add the other FX ISO. Now in this case, the reaction are much smaller and if I recall properly, the order of magnitude was four times, four, uh, slightly more than four times less, okay? And then of course, you can do all the post-processing that you want. Okay, so uh, I think we are done with the model. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, now we have about 30 minutes for, for questions. So let me just go back to Zoom. So please, if you have any questions, let me stop sharing. So if you have any questions, we are here. So first question, uh, how can you access the source code of OpenSeas? Okay. Um, first of all, you can, you, can, you can visualize it online, but it's much easier if you download it. If you are on Windows, I can give you the, the instruction for Windows, but you can do it in other ways. So let me share the screen. I just actually, I want to, I want to move it. Okay. Um, share my screen, share. So if, if you just want to visualize the OpenSea source code, you can just go uh, here. And you can just type on Google, OpenSea GitHub, okay? Because now OpenSea has been moved from the s one repository, that was the old repository, to, to, to GitHub, the GitHub, okay? So if you go here, you are, First of all, you need to know something about GitHub, but here you have all the source code of OpenSeas. You can watch directly from here. For example, if I go, if I want to see what, what is the code for the elastomeric X element, I can go into source. Well, of course, you need to know something about uh, OpenSeas. So if you navigate it directly online, you need to know something. So you go under the source code, you need that, you, you know that the elements are located under the element folder. Then you know that the bearing elements are located under the bearing, where is it? It should be somewhere down here. But probably they moved. Actually, that, that's why it is quite confusing visualizing them here. In fact, what I, what I do, which is much easier, is to, instead of visualizing it here, because you need to know how, how they were saved there, you can actually go into the code here, and you can get the code. Now there are two ways. Download a zip file, which is the easiest, easiest way for you or open with GitHub Desktop. Now, GitHub Desktop is actually more advanced and it takes time for you to understand how GitHub works. But the nice thing is that it will be updated every time people do changes in OpenSeas, okay? So if you want to stay up to date with OpenSeas without downloading the code every time, you choose the first option. Otherwise, you choose the second option, okay? When you choose the, when you, for example, for, if you want to do it easily, easily, you can just download the zip file, you save it somewhere, and for example, in my case, I have OpenSeas in um, here, for example. Okay, when you download the source code, you have, you have everything here. And if you go in Win64, you can open the OpenSeas solution. Of course, before doing this, you need to install Visual Studio, okay? When you do this, it will open all the source code of OpenSeas inside this programming ID, which is Visual Studio. Here, it is very easy to find things. For example, here you have all the files, but let's say I want to know where is it the elastomeric X C++ file. You can just here, you can just go here, and as you can see, that's why I couldn't find it, because I thought it was under bearing elements, but instead it is under elastomeric bearing. So you can open it and you have it here, okay? Then, of course, you need to know something about C++, okay? And, of course, something about OpenSeas to navigate this file. Okay, and this is out of the topic of this webinar, of course. Okay, so um, second question, 
how can you get the vectorial response quantity of interest, displacement, et cetera? Uh, this question is kind of, uh, and, uh, you, mean, you need to be more um, specific. What do you mean by how can you get the vectorial response quantities? For example, displacement, I already did it. I mean, you mean how can you do it in STKO or how can you do it in OpenSys? Because in STKO, I already told you. Uh, let me show you. Can I mute and see? Uh, okay, let's try. Um, oh, just one question. Hello? Is it for one? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, let me just explain about the vectorial. So, so uh, when you were showing the, the responses like the, the roof or the base reaction, you were showing um, uh, either in the X direction or Y direction. Yeah. You want to design an isolator. Most of the time, we are interested in the vectorial distance. So not in the X by itself, not in the Y by itself. The magnitude, the magnitude, you mean? At, at, uh, yes, at every point, at every step in time, where is the resultant movement? Yeah, of course. Yeah. In this case, it's easier for you because you already have it computed inside STKO. Whenever you have a vectorial, comp a vectorial result in STKO, STKO gives you the uh, direct components plus the magnitude. If you have a tensorial result, like the stress, it also computes the, again, the, the invariance. Let me show you. Let me just share my screen. Uh, let's go back to STKO. For example, when I was extracting it or just visualizing them, for example, displacement, here you can see the three components given by OpenSeas and then the uh, extra components computed by STKO. Now, in, the, in this case, it is a vector, so the extra component is only the magnitude, okay? And you can do it here to visualize the magnitude or directly here, for example, if you want to extract something, before I was, I was extracting, for example, acceleration and I had X, Y, Z, or magnitude, okay? So, of course, you can do, there is no, no need for you to understand how it works in OpenSys. It is already computed in STKO, okay? So, of course, you can get the magnitude. And uh, since you already asked these questions, uh, if you need to do the same for vectorial components, STKO also computes all the eigenvalues of the stress or strain vectors, all the invariants like the Bohmesis equivalent stress and so on, okay? Okay, so let's go back to the other questions. Um, can you please explain what the <coughs> is when specifying in Rayleigh damping? What are the implications of using this instead of tension stiffness damping? Um, oh, this question is quite difficult to answer, but you know why? Um, you need to know something about OpenSeas. So OpenSeas has three kind of uh, tangent, uh, three kind of matrices of stiffness matrices. The initial one which is pretty obvious, is the first elastic one. The tangent one, which is the uh, algorithmic tangent, with, which means the derivative of the internal forces with respect to the displacement. So it is, for example, that kind of tangent that can be zero or can be even negative sometimes. Um, the committed one, it, it, it is iterative, okay? So at every iteration, this tangent stiffness changes. The commit one instead, is also is like the tangent, but it is the the one converged at the previous time step, not the iterative one. Now the implication can be many. So for example, in my case, I did not have any problem choosing the tangent one because my um, first of all I was doing my uh, computation of the damping at the very beginning, and I knew that my entire structure. So it, which is the only one that contributes to the damping, because as I show you, the, uh, the elastomeric X element does not give you any damping. My entire structure is elastic, so I can choose either the initial, the tangent, or the commit, they are the same. Now there are problems, for example, when you choose the tangent one, so the current, and you are using a material with softening, for example. In this case, the tangent matrix will be negative sometimes. It can have negative eigenvalues, or zero, or actually negative eigenvalues. So this one can create some complication in the, uh, in the damping uh, computation. So probably in this case, if you're not sure, use the initial one. Then in other cases, people decide to choose the current rather than the commit, depending on the formulation of the elements, because there are some elements that do not, do not provide the tangent, and so they rely on the commit. The problem is that it's quite difficult to answer because you need to know uh, how the element works in OpenSea, okay? It is quite difficult. 
But if you're not sure, if you're not sure, use the initial one. Because by the way, dapping is a way of applying is related to, some, to, to the linear part of the model to assign a nonlinearity in a in a alternative way. So probably I will choose the uh, the initial one when you are not sure. Um, then there is another question. Um, so this one really damping. Okay, and then. Um, what is the use of create region? Uh, there are many, many uh, reasons for creating a region. Uh, now the command region itself is used to create inside OpenSys a vector of nodes or elements or a combination of them, but then there is an implication. You cannot specify a region either by uh, <laughs> So the main, the main reason is that you have a group of nodes or elements that can be easily called by other commands. So for example, imagine you want to record two elements. You can use the recorder command, then you, you use the LA tag and you input the tags of the element. But if you, in your case, you want to record many, many elements, it's very difficult to write all of them. So you can use the LA region and you just select the, the ID of the region. So the main reason is to create a group of elements in set OpenSys that can be referenced to just by one ID. This is the first, uh, the first case. The second case, as I told you, is that the region command also allows you to assign to that group of nodes or elements uh, specific dumping parameters, okay? So there are basically two, two needs for that. One is for creating selections, and one is for assigning dumping parameters which are different for different portions of your model. Um, uh, then Mohamed Mas is also, okay, yeah, this is an extra answer for, from my colleague here. Um, yes, we are also exporting actually now, we are in the process of uh, making um, also the post-processor customized in Python. So if you need to do, this is referred to the question of Mohamed that was asking about computing derived results like the magnitude. Now magnitude is already computed by SDKO, but imagine that you want to compute uh, somehow more complicated derived results uh, that are not available in SDKO. So the question is, how can I do it? I, I need to export every data from SDKO, copy paste it in Excel and do my calculation. And this one it can be very time consuming. Um, now we are working on uh, making the entire post-processor customized in Python in such a way that you will be able to code in Python directly from the post-processor and obtain the results that you want. Pretty much like if you have, yeah, like StoryDrift, for example. Um, pretty much like if you have Python, uh, something like MATLAB, for example, so a text editor with all your scripts directly inside the SDK post-processor. And it will be available around September, October, more or less. At least a first version. And it will be very useful. There is a question. Um, I think employed really really damping. Really damping. Was it to permit the model analysis? Um, but actually, really damping uh, was not related to the model analysis. Actually, it's for the dynamic analysis, I, I used the two model analysis to compute the frequency that they were used to compute the really damping parameters. So it's, it's the opposite, actually, if I understood your question. So is there uh, any other question? I think we have still some minutes for questions. How do you define the local axis? Oh, let me go back uh, to sharing my screen. Let's go back to the preprocessor. Uh, let me show you directly on, oh, not on this one because I don't want to save it. Let me create a new one. Okay, so for local axis, um, let me show you three different examples, okay? Uh, one will be an interaction. So let me create one node here one node here, just one node, and then an interaction between them. Okay, so this is an interaction. Now the second uh, case, let me create a curve. So for example, in this case, to make it more complicated, I create a spline curve, so you can better understand what's, what's going on. 
and then also a surface same thing here the surface i will make it slightly irregular okay why did i use these three components now if you look at the local axis because by default stko assigns local axis by default okay without the need for the user to assign them what is the default local axis well local axis stko tries to use the global local axis and tries to project them onto your geometry now uh, the interaction is not a geometry, so the local axis can go there safely. Uh, instead, a curve and a surface, they are geometry and they have constraints. So, for example, a curve has a constraint about the local axis because the x axis of the local orientation should be tangent to the curve. So, basically, Stigio tries to put the global local axis here and then it projects it onto the surfaces. Same thing for the surface, but for the surface, the normal should be outward. So if you want to assign some different local axis here, let's say in our case for the isolator system, in our case, the isolator system requires the X axis to be aligned with the isolator axis. So how do you do that? You go on the local axis here or directly from a property. You can create a new local axis, so add. You can choose the type of local axis. Um, 99% of the case, you are fine with the rectangular local axis. Rectangular local axis means the local axis is constant and the center of the local axis is not, is not important. Otherwise, you may, you may have cylindrical or spherical local axis, which is different. Um, it is based on cylindrical or spherical coordinates. So it, the center of the local axis um, makes sense, okay? So most of the time, you just need regular, uh, rectangular. So you choose rectangular and you press OK. Uh, whenever you use a command in STKO, pay attention to what the terminal is, is saying to you. In this case, it's okay, specify the first point, which is also the origin. As I told you, there is no need, that it is not important in the uh, rectangular local axis, the origin, so I pick just one point. Then pick the second point. The second point and the first point will be used to define the x axis, which is the one that we need. Now, the x axis should be here along the vertical direction, but if you see, if I move my, my mouse here, I can just define the local axis in, the, um, in my work plane, which is x, y. So how can I do it? If I, if I then click on front view, as you can see, my, my work plane is now changed into the vertical one. So I can choose the x axis here on this plane. And I can choose a point here. Okay. Now the third one should be a point uh, defining the, uh, the x axis. Okay. Now the, the first one is fixed. Now the third point defines the x, y plane. Now let's say my x-axis should go into the global x, I click here, and I'm done, okay? So three points, I define a plane. Now I can simply drag and drop it onto the desired entity. So for example, I can select this one and I can drag and drop it. Now as you can see, the, the color changed, but also the direction of the x is along uh, the axis and so on. If I do the same for the surface, just drag and drop it, you will see that it is slightly different. He tries to apply this one onto, the, onto this curve, but actually the x, axis, the x axis cannot be vertical. So he tries to best fit this local axis into the curve, okay? But for this little system, there is no constraint. So it will be exactly as you define it. And so stop sharing, next questions. A different local axis in custom common, do we have only TCL only interpreter? Yes, we only have the TCL interpreter. Uh, why? Because we started with TCL interpreter of OpenSys because it's the legacy one. And when we started the STKO project, the Python interpreter was not uh, major enough. Okay? So probably in some future version, we will start supporting OpenSys Python, but we want to make sure that the OpenSys Python supports everything. And at the moment, there are some features that are not available in the OpenSys Python, especially on the parallel side. Okay? So for the moment, we are sticking with TCL, even if we, pre we prefer Python as a programming language, but we need TCL because it is more complete. Regarding OpenSys, I mean, I'm not talking about the TCL language itself. I prefer, I prefer Python, actually. So how can we implement other laws for isolators? Um, are there any possible ways to create isolators? Well, as I told you uh, in this first webinar, I only talked about one of them probably the easiest one to define, which is the elastomeric X. We are planning to do other webinars to see how to use all the others. Uh, second, you will see a, um, 
an example in the content file that you can download tomorrow that compares with very small structure, very simple structures, pretty much all the isolators that you have in OpenSeas. So you can, you can see how they have been defined, okay, and how they work. And we are also planning to uh, create a plugin in Python inside STGO, pretty much like um, the rectangular section editor or the material tester or the dumping uh, widget that you have seen before, but for isolators, in such a way that it will be easier for users to create a isolating system in STGO. Um, let me see the other question. Thank you. Is it implemented in STGO model damping definition of damping? Is it possible to combine model analysis with the isolated structure and the model damping definition? Actually, uh, there was I, 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 there was model damping. Um, it has been added model damping in OpenSeas, but uh, we didn't put it inside STGO because we still need to test it actually. But I will take a note of this uh, because it's some of the comments that we wanted to test because we have seen some bug in that command. So we want to make sure in the parallel part, you see what I mean? And we want to make sure it works. So we are working on this actually. Also because this one actually, this model damping is also related to, to a, an explicit method by Professor Lin Shao, the uh, Yu Xin Chang, that was using it for a more performant explicit analysis. So we are going to work into this. Uh, oh yeah, um, would you mind to tell us again how to find the files for to, to today's webinar? Of course, once again, let me share my screen. So whenever you want to see files for a webinar, you just go on our website. So you go on stko.net, uh, as the software net, sorry. Then you go in the main menu here, you go on support and training. Training, if you want to go on the forum, you go on support. If you want to see the webinars, you go in training. And here you have e-learning courses and university courses. Webinars are inside e-learning courses, okay? Now these ones, of course, you can, you can just join the learning because it's the, they are the upcoming webinar or the webinar of tomorrow, of course, uh, of today. Um, tomorrow, this webinar will be moved here, and here you can access the recording on our YouTube channel or directly the content files. Okay, you just click here and you download it. Okay. Other chats. Uh, oh, here, here I have it. Um, oh, another answer from my colleague. There are already several state of the art models like, yeah, yeah. And friction panels. Uh, those are those that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so in this case, we just use an LRB. We, we have also HDRB and friction pendulums, and we're going to show how to use them in next webinars. And as I told you, we're, we're going to, to, to work on uh, Python automations that will make it easier for users to define the others. Because as I said, the elastomeric X is probably the, the easiest one to use. Uh, so we are going to uh, we are going to create some automation regarding the isolator field, okay? And of course, if you have any other suggestions uh, for next webinars, we are creating calendars for the next webinar. So if you have suggestions on some of your preferred topics, feel feel free to to ask. Just contact us by email, and we will try to program the next webinars also based on your requests. Thank you, everyone. Is there any other question? I think we have other five, 10 minutes. Someone has, has other questions. Oh, here we have just, uh, just received a suggestion, modeling FRP. So we will take it into account, thank you. And of course, if you have more other suggestions, um, please send us an email on our website and, and we will take them into account because we are planning um, all the webinars for the next ones. So. Oh, 
Oh, there is another question here. Um, can you tell when to use linear p delta or rotational geometric transformation in SDKO? Uh, well, actually, it depends on uh, what you want to, to, um, to capture from your structure. Now, of course, um, linear kinematics means you are assuming small displacement and rotation. Now, this is fine with very stiff structures. Or if you have slender structure, but you do not expect to have any, any bucking effect, you can just skip it. Um, if you plan to analyze uh, if there are, if you have very slender members, uh, and you imagine that you're going to, you, you, you cannot satisfy the uh, small displacement assumption, then you can move to P delta corrotational. Now, P delta and corrotational, they have a difference. The corrotational is the, is the more complete one. So it also includes P delta effects, but it also includes completely large, large rotations. The only thing that the corrotational does not have with respect to a full nonlinear kinematics are large deformations, but these are not used in uh, structural analysis. I mean, large deformation means if you're modeling rubbers or stuff like that, but they are more a mechanical stuff. Um, so in your case, you can just choose between linear uh, and when you expect some mm, buckling, then you can choose between P-delta or corrotational. Once again, if you just want to see the effect of, the, of, an, axial, of an, um, an axial load uh, on, on, the, on the added moment, then you can just choose P-delta. If you're not sure, just go with the corrotation and you're fine. So once again, about the, um, the request about the FRP, the simplified one. Okay. So simplified one about how, how to, to retrofit with FRP. Oh yes, about yeah, about the corrotational stuff. So just to answer to Ankur about the corrotational, uh, about the corrotational stuff. Let me just uh, share my screen. And probably, as you know, in open seas, well, when you refer to beams, of course you have linear transformation, p delta or corrotational. Uh, probably sometimes you need to model shells, and also in this case you may want to understand how to use. Uh, linear kinematics or nonlinear kinematics. Now, with shells, you cannot just use a geometric transformation. So it depends on the shell that you use. And there are many shells in open seas that use a corrotational formulation, but uh, they are very, uh, for example, the shell in MATC4 does not converge at all, or the shell DKGT and DKGQ, they converge, but they give very wrong results. So actually, we decided to add a new shell element in open seas. And if you want to see how it works, you can just go to the OpenSys beta and you can find for the SASD shell, which is a shell that we added just one month ago to the OpenSys source code. And um, where is it? This one. And let me find it. It has been added to the, to the OpenSys source code, but it has not been compiled. So you have to wait let's say for the next compilation of their source code, or you can try to download the source code compiled from uh, Professor Nicola Tarke. You see the instruction on our website, or you can go on my fork of OpenSys and there you can find, uh, uh, here it is, adding SAD shell Q4 element. Uh, there is a small uh, description here about why we decided to add this new uh, shell element. And this one is the effect, for example, of using a complete corrotational formulation. In this case, we, we made um, the simulation of a can, the crashing of a can, uh, using contact. And you can see all the local buckling here. Uh, this is possible, now translating this to a beam, this is possible with the corrotational, uh, not so much with the P-delta. P-delta is something just related to columns, of course, so it's a simplified way. Uh, but this one uses a full corrotational formulation. So probably in some of the future versions, we will show you how to, how to use uh, nonlinear kinematics. Um, this one is explaining how to use very large rotations. For example, this is the bending of a beam up to four times a full, uh, full rotation. Okay? So there are many, many stuff to, to talk about nonlinear kinematics. So let's go back. Uh, so simplified one, okay. Uh, can open system design catenary cable interaction with structures like electrons and emission of pole towers? Uh, 
uh, OpenSeas has an element called actually catenary cable. Um, it is a very new element. So we have, we have done some tests on the catenary cable. The results were pretty good, but I mean, you need, you need to test it. There is just one element called catenary cable, so you can use it, of course. And we, are, we also have it in STKO, so you can access it through STKO. So yes, responding to Saija Wu. As I said, the catenary cable has been added uh, very recently, so you, you need to test it. We, need, we did some tests on our benchmarking. Uh, as you can see in our website, we have a benchmark document. And I remember that we also tested the catenary cable. But of course, it's not, um, it's not there from like when the beam element was were there. So it, for, for sure, it needs to be tested more and more. Okay, so, so I think we are done. Ah, is there a tool like section designer in STKO? Um, it depends on what you mean for section designer because yes, uh, we have a section design, we have a section creator now for, for example, for uh, fiber cross sections, a rectangular fiber cross section that allows you to, for example, define the rectangular cross section <coughs> directly from um, geometric parameters and uh, let, let, me, let me show you, probably it's easier. I can just open one other file. Let me see if I have something here. Probably this one. Okay, here we have the, um, what is it, rectangular fiber section. So instead of creating the fiber section with the section command, you have this tool here that allows you to define the fiber section and it gives you one design tool that can be the, the computation of the confined concrete. So for example, based on the geometric com uh, configuration and the steer up configuration, if you decide to choose only the concrete cover and nothing in the concrete core, it will automatically compute the concrete core uh, as a, the confined version of the concrete that you define for the cover. So this one is a first tool. And we are actually working on extending this tool to do the design of the cross section. So it will show you the, um, the interaction domain, moment curvature analysis of this one. And it will be available very soon actually, after the summer. So yes. Uh, one more question. Um, to create special sections. Uh, special section, actually, if you mean special section because you want to draw them, yes, but you need to use the standard section command. So like that, then you go under section, fiber. When you are here, you have a complete CAD where you can draw your section, you can create fibers, you can, you can create uh, punctual rebars or linear rebars for FRP, for example. Um, is there any code for calculating? Uh, where is it? Yeah, they will be implemented in Python. Uh, yeah, pretty much like the, the tools that we have in Perform 3D. Uh, we have another section about Prabakan. Can SSD shell element capture EP and other PIN behavior on Masonry Wall? Of course it can because it is, um, it is like the shell MITC4. So it is a thick shell and it uses full three-dimensional costility models. So of course it can capture in plane linearity, out of plane linearity and the couple between them, also in terms of uh, out of plane transverse shear. And it is much better than the shell MITC4 because it, the in-plane in -plane behavior has been enhanced because it is now pretty insensitive to mesh distortion. Here, for example, this one is about um, large displacement, but this example here is a comparison of the shell MITC4 against the SSD shell Q4 for the behavior of the membrane part, for example, and its sensitivity to the crack propagation process. Now, as you can see, uh, this one is a benchmark to understand how the finite element is good in um, showing uh, strain localization. 
Uh, this example is using a, a ranking damage model. And as you know, a ranking damage model expects a fracture which is orthogonal to the direction of the principal uh, tensile stress. Now, in this case, those are simple notion plates that are pulled in this direction. So I expect the crack to be uh, initiated here because there is this notch. And then it will propagate horizontally. Uh, now there is a very complicated problem about strain localization because the results of the strain localization um, finite element solution depends too much on the finite element shape. In fact, in this benchmark, we decided to put the element into a skewed direction to see if the results follows the physical direction or not. Now, as you can see, the shell mitch 4, which is based on the standardized parametric formulation for the in-plane direction, the crack um, fails to follow the horizontal line. As you can see, it follows the mesh line, and then it finds a, a solution here. But as you can see, it's not a straight line. With the SSD shell, it's much better, as you can see. So yes, it follows the straight line as soon as it can. It tries to jump to the other element following the physical solution. And this one is very important, like in case for masonry, um, where you are actually studying uh, material failure. So yes. Uh, perfect. So I think we're done. And I want to thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Once again, if you have other suggestions for next webinars, just send us an email and thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and I hope to see you in the next one.